Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and I wanted to do an updated video for you guys. Today I have the Samsung TU7000, and I'm going to be using the 50 inch version. So the reason I picked this TV up is because it's the entry level to Samsung over the 6 series, but it has a lot of great features. And if you guys are looking for a bargain TV, this might be the one for you but it does have some limitations. So in this video, we're gonna talk about everything you need to know if you've been thinking about buying a Samsung TU7000. First of all, this television is available from 43 inches all the way up to 85 inches and everything in between. And according to the research I've done, all of these panels use vertical alignment panels, which is VA, which is known to give you better contrast and better black levels. Even though this television came out around two years ago, Samsung has repackaged it with the new eco-friendly cardboard to save on the earth. But I do wonder, if you go overseas, you can get the newer AU7000 and a new AU9000, which we never got in the United States for some reason. So there was no changes in the remote control. It doesn't do voice commands, but it does have hotkeys for Netflix, Prime Video, Samsung Plus, and you can see at the bottom you have features like settings and controls for multimedia. Another thing that's a little different from the TU7000 is that it had the feet that you can just take out of the box and snap them right into place, which is very easy, and then stand it up. However, all the 2021 models has this new feet where you can put them in place and you can adjust the level. So if you want it lower to the table, you can move it down. If you want it taller, you just flip this little switch and you can move it up. Another feature that you'll like about the TU7000 is that it has a port on the bottom so the TV delivers really good bass response in compared to the newer models. And right below the logo, there's a little press button that you can use to get through some of the basic controls on the television. Now after I got everything out of the box, I will tell you that there's a few things you need to do. First of all, you're going to remove all the different film around the edges of the television. And on the front of the TV, you're going to find these white screen protectors. Just take those off. If you already purchased a TU7000 and you pulled off the protective film and everything's working fine, you're good to go. But according to Samsung, you're only going to pull off the protective film if you see a tab. And that's something I've been telling you guys all along. Okay, okay, back to the design. From the side view, it is very thin and very chic. It also has edge lit backlights, which could be a problem with uniformity, but I think Samsung has it handled. One thing I really like about Samsung television is that the bezels are very thin and it looks very clean, more like a picture. And on the bottom of it, you're gonna see the Samsung logo. And like I told you guys before, there's a press button right on the bottom. And here's a look of the feet. So when it's sitting on the table, I think you guys are gonna be happy with the premium look of it. And there is capabilities of mounting on the wall due to the screw holes that are on the back of the television. Now I did tell you guys that there are some limitations with this television and it all begins on the rear panel. On the back of it, you're gonna find one USB, one ethernet connection for cooking directly up to a modem, two HDMI 2.0s, antenna connection, which uses ATSC 2.0, and a fiber optic output. So what does that mean to you? First of all, you can play any of the gaming consoles on it, no problem there, but you will not be able to achieve 120 hertz because it is a 60 hertz panel. The second thing is you cannot hook up a wired headset to it. You must use Bluetooth, which it does have Bluetooth 4.2. And the third thing, if you have more than two HDMI devices, you'll have to get a splitter. And what I'll do is in the description below, I'll leave a link to some videos where I actually help you solve those problems. There's a quick little color test. Now I will tell you that this is a recording, but I think the TV looks great. The only problems you're gonna really have with a TV like this, if you actually do 4K HDR content, it has a low nits rating, so that's candlelight. So you're gonna find that the TV is gonna appear a lot darker if you're trying to watch Netflix 4K or like Amazon Prime or anything like that. Now let's go ahead and do some quick tests so I can show you guys the uniformity and a few other things and how the screen performs. The first thing I'm gonna show you guys is a contrast test. As you can see right here, the black levels are really good and the white levels are pretty good as well. And one thing you can notice is a little bit of black around the edge as you can see with this uniformity test. But if we switch over to black levels, everything looks pretty good thanks to Samsung UHD dimming. 
Also, if you take a look at this motion test, you can see that all the lines are working really good. And Samsung's always had pretty good motions according to what I've seen in the past. Now, you guys sometimes comment that a TV has bad motion, and I'll tell you when it happens. First of all, it's usually when you have a very old or poor signal. So in other words, this TV's 4K. If you run something like a 720p that's been recorded terrible, the motion's really not gonna help out that much, nor is up converting gonna help out that much. You gotta have a good signal to get a good picture. And that's the bottom line. When it comes to gaming, let's take a look at the settings on the TU7000. So natively, when you go down to TV and displays, it can do 4K. And if you look at the details, you can see that the TV does support 4K at 60 Hertz and it will not support the 120 Hertz gaming. Also, when you go down to watching movies, it will do 10 bit at 24 Hertz. Other options you get is 1440 or 1080p. And if you go down to 1440, the same thing. Now we're gonna to try to override this by going down to video fidelity and screen over scanning. And let's go ahead and choose HDMI. Now that we're in manual settings, I can go and press okay, hit back. And then we're gonna go ahead and toggle this up to 1440. Now, after I toggled it, I can then hit the refresh rate. And when I tried to toggle over to 1440 at 120 Hertz, it did drop down to 1080p at 120 Hertz. After grabbing a remote control, if I look at the TV settings, you can see that it's now saying 1920 by 1080 at 120 Hertz. Now it did automatically detect the PlayStation that I have plugged in through a switcher, but you can see that's the maximum control that you can get out of this TV. Another thing is when you manually switch over, you lose all the auto detection features and certain features like HDR will not work. Another thing I did for you guys, I tested the input lag with a 60 Hertz signal and it was getting a respectful 9.5 milliseconds. So if you're gonna be doing gaming and gaming mode, it'll work out pretty good for you. Now let's go ahead and do some tests with games. Now there's a few last things I wanna show you guys in the operating system itself. Now, the original TU7000 has Tizen 5.5, and I can't figure out if this one was upgraded to the 6.0. If you know, let me know in the comments below. With that being said, let me show you guys some of the menus and some of the other features that the TV has. So I'm gonna show you guys features and answer questions at the same time. So people ask me, why is the TV laggy sometimes? Well, the reason is, is because this particular model uses the Crystal UHD processor, which is not as robust as you're gonna find in the QLED. So it may be slower at times. It's not gonna hurt anything, but you will find yourself pressing on the button multiple times and it hardly moves. Pretty much all the newer TVs can control the soundbar if you're using the HDMI cable and the input's called HDMI arc. But what if you're using a fiber optic? So this is how you would do it. First of all, you wanna go over here to where it says Universal Remote. Once you press on that, you wanna go ahead and press Start, and then you're gonna choose what box you have. So in this case, we're gonna do Home Theater, and then we're gonna search for brands like Bose. You're gonna tell it that the fiber optics is where it's connected, and then you can test power. Now in this case, the power didn't turn off, I would just hit No, and then it's gonna retry until it finds it. Once this setup is complete, then that's pretty much how you can do it. And the TV at that point will realize the volume is optical. See right there, it's showing Bose optical and it's controlling the volume if you guys can see the Bose blinking. The next question people ask me is how do you use Apple AirPlay or how do you use screen mirroring? Well, first of all, all you need to do is go into settings and you gotta make sure the TV's connected to Wi-Fi and not using a network cable because AirPlay uses Wi-Fi and it has to be a good Wi-Fi at that. So if it's really laggy, you might wanna check your firmware update or just get a new router in general. But from the settings, you wanna go down to general and then click on AirPlay. Then you wanna grab your smartphone, click on the AirPlay after you drop down the menu, and then you're gonna wait for it to find your television. Once you go ahead and click on it, you're gonna get this code, go and enter that into your phone or computer, hit okay. And now you're screen mirroring. So anything you show on your phone is gonna show on the television. That it doesn't work perfect for movies and the screen has to always be on. The minute you hit the power button, the screen goes off too. 
And if you have a Samsung device, it's easy to share the screen. You slide down twice and then you press on screen share. And when you get this pop-up on your TV, just hit allow. And now the screen mirroring is working. Another feature I wanna show you guys, if you go down to settings and press on e-manuals, this is a complete instruction book on how to use a television right on the television. Pretty cool. All you need to do is just go ahead and pull this up. You're gonna give it a little time to catch up. And then you have your guide to troubleshooting. And real quick, I wanna show you guys some applications. First of all, they just added TikTok on the US version, so you can click on that and watch your favorite TikTok videos. This is becoming one of my favorite apps, it's called Tubi. And this application allows you to watch some of the older movies from the 80s, as well as TV shows. You have Comic View and a bunch of other ones. It also has Facebook Watch, so if you're on Facebook all the time watching those cool videos, you can do it on this TV. It also supports Plex, so if you have a server and you loaded up your <clears throat> home movies, this is gonna allow you to watch those. Roku just added their channel to Samsung. You also have Peacock that has shows like The Office on it. Shutter's available, which is a new sci-fi channel. It has support for YouTube TV, so you don't have to use a, another application. You have Calm, so you can get your meditation on. HBO Max, and look at this lineup. Netflix, Prime, Hulu. Any kind of app you can think about is on here. And they even have the gallery, so if you have a Samsung phone, you can log into here and you can have your pictures to upload. Here's a few of the features you guys probably didn't know this TV can do. First of all, if you go down to general and accessibility, let's say for example, you're playing some music or a video and you wanna to go to sleep without the picture, you can go down here and turn the picture off while the music still plays. Cool feature. Another feature you can do is the power and energy saving. If the TV looks too dim and you don't want it to adjust itself, just go in here and you wanna turn all these features off so the TV won't adjust itself. And at the bottom, you can set it up to turn itself off at four hours, six hours, eight hours, or just uh, leave that feature off altogether. Another feature you guys probably don't know, if you have an over-the-air antenna and you see this broadcast is grayed out, you can't scan with your antenna. So what you can do is go back to your home and then go over to where you see sources. So what you have to do is go up here and choose TV. Once you press on this, it's gonna open up Samsung TV Plus, and I don't wanna do that for copyright material. So let's, now broadcast is available. I can hit auto program, and now I can use my antenna to scan for local channels. And here in San Diego, where I live, usually get about 20 channels, which is pretty cool. And the last thing I'll show you guys, is it has Samsung TV in here, where it's basically gonna give you all these on-demand videos that you can watch without having service. All you need to do is have internet on your television, enter your zip code, and then you have access to all these movies with commercials, of course. But you can see where this TV has all the goodies of the other televisions that are more expensive. It's just very limited in certain things like your inputs, and it's very limited as far as the resolution if you use HDR. So for an updated video, that's pretty much everything you guys need to know. And if you wanna watch the original video that I filmed back in April, 2020, I'll leave that in the comments below. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin it there so you can go check it out and learn even more. But I had a question for you guys. I'm kinda of new to live streaming and speaking live is kinda of tough, but is this something that you guys would like to see a live stream on? If so, maybe I'll set that up and uh, set up a time and date where we can go online and talk about it. I'm Tech Steve. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.